You know, the much anticipated FIFA 12 game has officially been released. Everybody, I'm sure, has seen the trailer by now. I unfortunately have not got it. Right after this interview, I'm going in my car and going to get it. To preview the game, Marco Georgievich, sports editor for GameSpot, has come on to talk about the game. Marco, how you doing today? Good yourself? I'm, do I'm doing great. How can I not be great? This new, exactly. this new game has come out. How can I not be great? Let's, uh, let's talk about the differences between FIFA 11 and FIFA 12. Now, from my gaming experience with FIFA 11, the online clubs were a bit shaky. It seemed like guys could become seven feet tall, 300 pounds, and still run like they're Lionel Messi. Uh, is it part of the virtual pro being that good and that dominant? Or was it that the defenders just weren't that good and have the defending has the defending improved this year? Well, if you're looking at just the defending outside of Online Pro, they have done a lot of changes to it. Uh, they're they really implemented making defenders act more realistically. They've uh, overhauled the defensive uh, tackling system. In the past, you could not exactly tackle a player, but like put pressure on them. But now there is an actual dedicated standing tackle button on top of having a contained button, which allows you to be close to the defender without actually touching them, kind of like breaking off passes. And the secondary player to uh, call where you were able to call a, you know, an AI player who would then act as like kind of like to break off a passing lane. They've adjusted those a little bit. So it does help in regards to making it a little bit tougher for your opposition to score. But again, it's more based on how the player uses that. If someone avoid doesn't use that secondary control, they're not getting that full defensive experience. So would you say with the defending that it's become more realistic with the uh, standing tackle button in this case? Well, they're trying to make it more realistic in the sense that, you know, players are going to be much more physical, and that's what they've improved upon, the physics engines in terms of how players interact with one another. I think if you've seen those, uh, you know, the clips before FIFA 12 even hit stores, there were those, you know, weird glitches where players were colliding with in, into one another. And that was part of that whole new physics engine is that players acted much more realistically so that when they hit each other, they would react as such. And it because of the demo, it kind of gave off the, you know, the wrong impression that players were just, you know, ragdolls. In a sense, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've seen, I've, I've watched those clips on YouTube, and it just seemed astonishing to me. Would you say this is the player impact engine that we're talking about? Yes. Would you say that these are after effects of EA Sports trying to make it that much more realistic, and this is something that could be improved in the future? I think it'll definitely be improved upon in the future because again, this is the first year that they've actually implemented that in the FIFA game. EA Sports has in the past in their NHL franchise and even in Madden had you know different kinds of physics engines where players' collisions would react a certain way. And I think now with FIFA evolving in such a way and because of the fact that EA has such a large circle within their offices where they can you know share information with other comp with other developers so the nhl team was giving them some you know insight on how to work that physics engine i think for next year's game and moving forward the physics engine will and that impact engine will improve upon will be improved upon let's talk about the goalies now in some cases it seemed like these guys were running around with their heads cut off like chickens i mean it, it was it was utterly surprising to me um, have they improved in any sort of way this year? Have they become more realistic as well? I think that's a matter of personal preference. Uh, I think gamers who uh, like to control the goal as much as po as much as they can with you know with the triangle or the uh, Y button on the 360 controller, they were able to you know work around those mistakes. Of course, just like in any sport, you know there's going to be goofs where you know a keeper is going to assume one thing and he doesn't do the right thing. You know, there's always that you know he'll push, you know, he'll try to parry it away, but instead he goes to an uh, attacking player and they get the easy goal. It's it's a nature of the sport, even in real life. Uh, in though in the game though, it looks as though they have improved it. Online though, I haven't been had a chance to really play online with a lot of people, so I haven't gone to see how it works online. If people have been able to exploit it, but in terms of in game, it's very rare that a goalie makes a mistake. It's more because of the defensive changes that defenders will make mistakes. So the defending is basically based on how well a goalie uh, reacts and plays during the game. It's all based on your ability to defend. It's it's both the the, the team that you're playing with and the, um, your own the, the player's skill. Uh, in career mode, with player growth, it seemed like it took forever for one guy's uh, virtual pro to go from point A to point B and then to point C. 
Uh, are they improving at a better rate this year than last year? I find that um, in terms of the Virtual Pro, it is still very much where you need to play a lot for your character to improve. They kind of wanted to keep that realistic in terms of just as in real life, a player is not going to become a superstar overnight. They are going to have to develop and they want you to play as much as possible to improve your character. I've noticed that though in, in, in the career mode, your coaching, your coaches are much more, um, not so much restrictive, but they, 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 they request more from you. They want you to perform well. And now with the changes in terms of defending where if you, you know, tap too much on a button to like, you know, do a tackle and you miss a tackle, you are going to be penalized more so. But at the same time, if you pull it off and you successfully tackle a defender or you know, make the smart passes, you are getting rewarded. So it works both ways. Very quickly, what, uh, what position did you choose for your virtual pro? I'm just curious. For me, always attacking midfielder. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because you get a little okay. bit of both. You, get, you, get to, you, know, you have the opportunity to score a goal. But at the same time, you are required to, you know, come back and play defense at the same time. Okay, that's very noble of you. Many people would take yeah. a striker. Um, you've seen a lot of sports games. Yes. How is this one different than the rest that you've seen? Are we talking all sports games or just soccer games? Soccer games. I think FIFA has always been the best at uh, giving gamers the most authentic experience presentation-wise. They've always done a great job with fantastic commentary team. You know, they always do really well with stadium implementation. They have tons of stadiums well rep, uh, replicated to, you know, factor in how the stadiums look in real life. Um, and, and just not, not just that, just the, the fact that they have, you know, all the clubs from all the major leagues in Europe. So, you know, you've got the Premiership, you've got the Serie A, you've got La Liga. All, all clubs are in the game properly represented. And you get that experience that, you know, especially us in, in North America, since we're not going to be able to go to those games in Europe, to be as close as possible without actually being there. Now, last question for you, Marco. Is there any competition with PES 2012 with FIFA? It depends on how you look at things. The fact that uh, PES, you know, Pro Evolution Soccer 2012, has the Champions League license, they're able to implement a lot with UEFA, you know, the European uh, Football Federation there, to, you know, have the proper licenses to do the, you know, the big shebang with you know, presentation and showing off the, you know, the trophy and this and that. And that kind of is something that EA's FIFA series doesn't have. So if someone wants that experience of maybe playing with a smaller club from like Eastern Europe or, or Turkey or, you know, the Ukraine, wherever, you know, wherever those clubs might not be in FIFA, there is that opportunity. Also, um, Pro Evolution Soccer has the Copa Libertadores, which is the South American club competition, which is also extremely popular. And again, exclusive to that franchise. So it's more or less that if you're looking for, you know, that implementation, PS does have that, you know, advantage over FIFA. But if you're looking for realism and if you just want to play with like domestic leagues, like let's say the Major League Soccer League in North America, or if you just want to play at the Premiership, if you're an Arsenal fan, there are, those teams aren't in PS. So you'll definitely shift, you'll, you'll stay with FIFA and not bother in trying out uh, PS. Very quickly, last question for you, Marco. Which one would you recommend then? Would you recommend FIFA 12 or would you recommend PES 2012? In terms of, uh, you know, bang for buck, it has to be FIFA. Pro Evolution has improved uh, over the last few years, but in terms of, you know, getting the full presentation, getting, being immersed in the sport, you can't beat FIFA. Marco Djordjevic, sports editor for GameSpot. Thank you very much for the time. We look forward to having you on soon, possibly for NHL 12. Hopefully. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Subscribe to TYT Sports.